Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I'm a kick business coach, and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. So, uh, the launch execution, um, I mean, I, I pretty much told you about it. You're gonna you're gonna put up a few good pieces of content. I would put different pieces of content up. Don't just you know, if I put up startup rows, I wouldn't put up a, four importing articles. I put up one article about A/B testing. Put up one article about um, you know, uh, I did this thing called Startup Bus where we built a startup on a bus in three days. So I did a blog post about that. I did like a blog post about me and Kyle, who's my business partner in this. Um, just our relationship and how we met, um, you know, just just different, just variety, and uh, and you know, if one of the posts doesn't work, then people are just gonna click a different post. It's not like the whole brand's gonna fall apart if you have one blog post that doesn't jive with your target audience. But um, so you execute that launch, put up five or six pieces of initial content that you really think, you know, that you really put a good amount of time in. Like this, in, this importing post, I think took me like. 20 hours or something, 15 hours to write maybe, um, with creating the graphics and going into the data and everything, and making sure everything I was talking about was correct. <laughs> um, so, you know, put put up those first few pieces of content, do the promotion, and uh, and from there you're gonna just kind of do a lot of trial and error. You're gonna go really deep into that data, like I said, and you're gonna see what content people are actually reading. Like I can go on here without knowing anything else and just look at the average time on site and uh, and one sec you can just look at the average time on site and see how good your content is so I mean just start doing stuff like that you're gonna know what content's working what's not um, you know, I mean this thing I mean this is a this video or this uh, this article has almost 30 minutes average time on site. So I mean, obviously, I'm gonna write more content like that, and that's that's literally how we run our business now. We had four or five decent ideas, and now our audience tells us what we need to write about. We can't even keep up with the questions coming into our email. We can't answer them quick enough. We're just literally writing blog posts to catch up with month and you know, three month old emails and stuff like that. Um, so you know, now we're just drowning in the work. And it's kind of interesting because when I, when I started this thing, again, I was thinking, how am I going to compete with copy blogger, pro blogger, all these people that have been doing this forever. Um, but it, it, it's, just, it's just not like that <laughs> because, I mean, I'm just drowning in work already and this thing's barely gotten started. So, so in terms of building uh, your first thousand fans, the brand's going to really do it for you. As long as you're focused on delivering value to your target audience and not actually selling anything yet, not asking for anything in return, because they're going to tell you what you need to create and sell to them once you have a blog post that really hits a, a core string with them. You know, so, um, so I don't know if I explained that well enough, but, uh, but that's basically how I did it, was just delivering value and the brand is the, 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 the fact that you went through and created an engaging brand already is going to make all of your content that much more effective. You know, like I like I showed you, just having a, a different name than Startup Bros would have made all of our content 20% less effective, 20% less engaging, 20% less memorable. Um, so the brand elements are really what is going to make this push easy for you compared to where most people will put up a blog, like I said, you know, willmitchell.com and drive traffic there forever and no one cares about it because it seems like you're just pumping up your own ego because it's willmitchell.com which interesting note too willmitchell.com actually used to have the exact same the exact same um, blog theme which is thesis the exact same skin for that the only differences were the actual content of the website and the logo and the name and everything so I mean it, it just goes to show you it's all about it's all about the brand elements, but moving on from that, starting to get down here. Monetization, funnels, making the first dollar, all that, all that good stuff. Milking the cow. So, 
how to make your first dollar on this, there's so many ways to make money on this, right? So you're, I mean, you're literally, if you do this correctly, you're going to have people emailing you saying, hey, can I give you money for an hour of your time? I mean, it, it, people are going to ask you for coaching. People are going to ask you for consulting. People are going to ask you to implement things for them. So, I mean, a business will naturally come out of this. So it, it, that's really the fun part of it. So how to make your first dollar. For us, we started doing coaching calls and things like that. Discovered that um, I couldn't scale it just doing the 20-minute calls you know, 15 times a day. So we stopped doing that. Now what we've done is, uh, like I said, we're going to create, we're working with Nick now to create uh, an importing product just based on just based on this article. It's just going to be a built-out version of this article with a few other little things that are really going to sell this market really well. Like now I know that these people, their only real problem is they want to, they don't want to do any work, right? No one does. They want to know good supplier, good product, and, and that's all they really want to know. So, you know, I can just make a $97 a month membership course or membership uh, site where we go through and analyze the importing market once a month and say, you know, here's the big movie, movers and shakers, here's the, uh, the stealth products that are really selling well right now, here's the suppliers that are doing really, really well, here's the bad suppliers who rip people off. Um, so just creating that, I mean, I, I would have never known to create that course or that membership site, but now it's, it's just glaring me in the face with pure, it's purely obvious now. So, um, so I mean, that's how you monetize it. Is your audience is going to tell you how to monetize it? You're you're going to have to monetize it because you're not. You have so many people asking you questions about the things that you've written about. That the only way to answer them all without driving yourself crazy and without saying, uh, you know, I can't, I just can't answer your question. You're going to make a course or something that answers all those questions for them, and you're going to say, hey, listen, I can give limited help, but here's some blog posts about it. They have done really well. People say that they have a lot of value in and of themselves. But if you want to take it one step further, there's also this paid service where you know it's all done for you essentially, and here's a bigger course and everything. So, um, so they're they're naturally going to tell you how <laughs> how to monetize them. Is my point. Um, and then scaling for success. I mean, this is kind of where I'm at with my business now. So I can't give a ton of insight here. We're having a lot of problems with scalability with this. Um, we have literally too many people emailing us and things like that. So uh, that's you know why we hired Nick was we're working on expanding our cash flow now. We have all this super high quality traffic, and now we're at a good point in our business now where the first phase of our business was all about building traffic <clears throat> and building that audience, that initial fan base. Um, and now, now we've gotten to the point where we can stop building a fan base where that's just running its, on its own now. Like I said, we built a viral mechanic within the brand that people are just nat the, the brand's naturally going to carry itself now, at least for right now. Um, so we don't have to do that much other than put out a few pieces of content promoted to our list and they'll promote for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, now the big thing for us is going to be how to get money out of it. Um, so it's kind it's kind of it's it's going to be fun for us this year to shift our focus from building an audience and a fan base to actually extracting I don't want to say extracting but <laughs> actually uh, you know cre doing the actual exchange of value them giving us money and us giving them the knowledge and service that actually creates a return for them that's what this year is going to be for us so um, so that's that's basically it. I mean once you have those thousand fans things are gonna start running themselves you're gonna basically be working for your target audience so make sure you really want to work for them <laughs> before you do any of this but um, and then the last thing is just how to expand reach operationalize how to do again this is this, these are the things that we're having trouble with right now so um, this is how to how to build it from where it's at now, how to build it from a thousand fans to ten thousand, hundred thousand, million fans. How do you change it from? Uh, how do you take startup bros and make it into the four-hour work week, things like that? Which, by the way, the four-hour work week. Uh, interesting point. Tim Ferriss actually did the exact same A/B testing method, uh, actually a little bit less advanced than this, a little bit less reliable, to come up with the four-hour work week name. He basically put a bunch of Google ads up that were exactly the same except the headline was the different book titles 
and four hour work week ended up getting the highest click through rate. So that's what he went with. So I mean he basically did the same thing. He tested the name, the tagline, the concept, the messaging, the language that he was using to his target audience. And because of that, the four hour work week is just a naturally naturally engaging thing, a concept, a brand. So that's that's basically what you're gonna be trying to do here. Um, and what we're trying to do at Startup Bros and what you can easily do. Again, if I can do this, then you guys should easily be able to do it because most of you are better business people than I am. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, we're just making this up as we go, and this is what has worked for us up until now. So, um, so yeah, that's that. That's pretty much everything. So I guess I'll do a Q&A now if anyone has questions. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, I want to hear, I want a few people to pop over. Is this good stuff? Are you guys digging this? Pop over in the chat and let us know. Awesome, amazing, great stuff. Oh yeah, all right, cool, cool. So um, let's knock out some of the, the fast answer ones first. Um, how many blog posts did you write before you reached your first thousand fans? Are you there? Mr. Will? Yeah, sorry about that, I muted myself. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, we should be able to see I hope there's a quick way I can look at this. <laughs> um, yeah, give me one second. I'll scroll okay. to it. What's the next question while you're doing that? Um, there was a couple more that were real quick. Uh, so how are you monetizing it right now? How are you making money right now? Uh, right now, all of our money comes through consulting and coaching still. Um, that's another thing. Again, we, we don't make a ton of money on this yet, but... Um, up until now we've been focusing on building that audience and everything and now that we have a huge audience um, which again it's still growing somehow even though we've stopped trying to build an audience which is a good thing to see um, now that we're at that point we're gonna really start to dig down on monetization um, because uh, because yeah I mean the like it, it, it's so much harder. It was so much harder for me to. It, it, it's interesting that it's been harder for me to monetize than it has been to build the audience. I thought it was going to be the other way around. Um, but so this was the first blog post we made, and this this is just a retarded blog post. Like I said, this was like the piece on um, on me and Kyle. So it just introduces us, sort of. And like, if you go through this, I, I encourage everyone to do this because this is how this is basically how I built everything I built is just going through other people's stuff and seeing what works and taking what works. Um, just a master copier, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I would encourage everyone to go through here. Like, we don't talk like this at all anymore. This doesn't work for our brand. We thought it did at first, but the the audience will change your brand naturally as you go through it. So, just just getting started is the most important part. So yeah, so this is our first blog post, almost no engagement. Second blog post was a book report where we literally just like quote a book. Um, that went decently well. Um, actually, I'll look and see how well exactly that did. And then uh, this was our third blog post, and this was the blog post that I literally took off of willmitchell.com and put onto here. So on willmitchell.com, this blog post had nothing, like literally 80 or 90 views. Um, on here, it's our third most popular blog article. So our, our first popular blog article was uh, was this one that I literally just copy pasted from a brain that didn't work. <laughs> but uh, and, and this this is also is how we make we actually make more money on affiliate links and stuff than anything else right now. So this is how we make most of our money is like these little affiliate links and. Like our resources page here, uh, we call it secret weapons page. Again, A/B testing. Secret weapons converted better than resources. But um, but like all these are affiliate links. So this is this is where the majority of our money comes from right now. Um, cool. But, so I think that actually answers one of the other questions, which was, uh, what are your some of your favorite WordPress plugins? So they're on your secret weapons page, right? Uh yeah, most of them are. Let me I'll give you guys the an actual look though, since you guys are all advanced. 
Um, yeah, I've went through. I, I, I'm like obsessive with WordPress plugins and stuff too. So, um, yeah, if anyone, if anyone has any questions or anything, or thinks they know a better WordPress plugin, or they don't know why I chose one, you feel free to email me and talk it out. But, um, but yeah, like this plugin right here. I know a lot of people know Dig Dig, which is the sidebar share plugin that basically makes this box. And uh, this this one is actually called a, um, AA's Dig Dig Alternative, and it's like literally ten times faster than Dig Dig, and uh, and it's free and it's awesome. <laughs> so like I I've, I spent a long time comparing plugins and stuff. One of the really important things that people overlook is site speed. Uh, especially for Google, like one of the main reasons that we're number one here is because our site's really fast, so it has a really low bounce rate. When people go to the site, they typically don't click off back to Google right away. Um, that's because we have such a quick load time. The content loads first. Things like that are really important. Again, just everything has to be what does my target audience want. They don't want any load time, so I don't I don't give them load time. Um, so AA's Dig Dig Alternative, I already mentioned that one. That one's awesome. Um, this is what I use for all of my analytics and stuff to put tracking codes in my site. Uh, it's called Segmentio. It's a website that basically combines all of your tracking codes into one and then enters them in on your site uh, in a more optimized way so it speeds up your site again. Um, appointment calendar plugin. That's something I use just to schedule uh, coaching calls and stuff. Um, WordPress Minify, this is a really good one. This can interfere with other plugins, but if it works for you, it'll really speed up uh, site load speed. So that's that's a really good one. I'd suggest people try Comment Redirect by Yoast. That's a really cool one. Um, one of our most valuable pages on our site, so one of the pages that we get the most subscribers from, is uh, is the thank you for your comment page. So when people leave a comment on my blog, they get redirected to a comment thank you page. And um, that's been extremely effective for us just from a brand building perspective and also getting people on the list because people are much more likely to get on the list after they comment for whatever reason. Can you explain that real quick or can you show that to us so we can see what you're talking about? Yeah, definitely. Um, let me see. How can I show you? I'll go in the back. Um, so here's the comment redirect settings. And this, I've done some interesting things on our thank you page too. Like you'll see, I have this ridiculous animated GIF on uh, on this thank you page, on all of our thank you pages actually, and it's so interesting to me. Like I, I put up 15 different animated GIFs, just ridiculous GIFs of uh, you know, people it, like SpongeBob freaking out, like Despicable Me's freaking out, um, just like really excited, like a thank you GIF for them signing up to the list or giving a comment. And I forgot what the exact data was, but it was like just, just putting this picture of SpongeBob up as opposed to a Despicable Me thing, it was like a 35% conversion rate increase and like just crazy things like that. So this is the page. After you comment, you immediately get redirected to here. And then this is the email box that we use for that. And then if they don't want to fill out the email box, I send them to our free stuff page. And that's just more opt-in boxes for them. This is basically all of the offers we have right now. Um, so yeah, so that that page has been. This is our most valuable page. Um, and then our second most valuable page is our about page. Interestingly, your about page is like that's going to be one of the main brand builders. If you like, you should probably spend just as much time on the about page as you do your first couple pieces of content on your blog, honestly. But um, back to the plugins. Um, FeedBurner, that just redirects my feed to FeedBurner. Foobox, that's so when people click a uh, image, which this isn't working right now, so I need to fix it. But if people click an image, it won't go to a completely different page, and they'll lose the content. It'll just pop up for them, and then they can close it in the same window with the content still there. Um, that's the goal of that. Bromap anti-spam bot plugin. That just puts a little checkbox under your comment box. Um, so like on this one you can see at the end of our 
comment box that says confirm you're not a spammer. Surprisingly enough, that gets rid of about 90% of spam. <laughs> I'm not sure how it works, but... Um, what was that one called? Bromap Anti-Spam Bot Plugin, right there. And uh, that, that one's been really good for me. Jetpack I use a little bit, but if anyone's thinking about, because I've spent so much time on this question, if anyone's thinking, should I go with Jetpack's comment system or should I go with Discuss or anything like that, I have seen nothing, and you know I A-B test everything, I've seen nothing but bad results switching out anything but the WordPress native comment system. So if anyone's wondering, like, should I use Jetpack comments, I wouldn't because I get much less, much less comments when I enable anything else but WordPress comments. I think people have are you, just used to the WordPress comments. Have you used Facebook comments? I have. Um, they can be good. Uh, I used to have I used to have like the WordPress comment box right under the Facebook comments, but when I removed the Facebook comments, my WordPress comments went up by like 70% or something. I think the problem is um, people are really afraid of whenever they do anything with Facebook on another website. I think they're afraid of that website taking advantage of it and posting on their Facebook and basically using them as an advertising channel. So I think people have become really afraid of that sort of thing. But but again, A/B test everything because that this this is all just for for my target audience. You know, um, for your target target audience, it could be that they only comment using discuss or you know, like I know a lot of political sites use Discuss because people, political, when you're targeting political people, people that are debating in the comments, they like to be able to go from site to site and start debates in the comment section and then be notified when they get replies on different sites. But like for my site, I don't want the Discuss system because if it shows replies from all my competitors' websites and they go and click off to a competitor's website to read the reply to a comment, uh, that's the opposite of what I want my website to do, right? I want to keep them there and get them onto my email list and build a relationship with them. So, uh, like, those other types of comment systems didn't work for my target audience, but for some target audiences, they do. So, Cool. Um, lead pages, like I said, uh, if anyone doesn't use lead pages, it's absolutely incredible. That's how we make all of our landing pages now. And, uh, and I just don't know what we were doing before we had lead pages because this thing is just absolutely amazing. Uh, I guess I'm not logged in, so. Um, but lead pages is uh, one of my favorite plugins. That's how we use. That's what we make all of our landing pages in now. So this just connects it to the WordPress, so I can make instead of leadpages.com/slash/landing page, it's startuprose.com/slash/landing page. Um, lead player, same company. They uh, they basically. When you watch a YouTube video on my site, you'll see that a opt-in box will pop up, and I hope this doesn't play for you guys. Um, so an opt-in box will pop up on all these videos, and uh, people can sign up for our list through there. So that's what Lead Player is, and that's actually the same company as Lead Pages. Um, and let's see if I have anything else interesting. Pretty Link Pro, that's a link shortener, so. I use that to, all of our affiliate links just say like startupbros.com slash lead pages and that redirects to our, your, our affiliate link. So that's just what that does. Um, scripts to footer, that's another really good one for site speed. This will move all of your CSS scripts and all of your JavaScript and everything. Uh, I'm sorry, not your CSS, just your JavaScript and everything. <clears throat> It'll move all that into the footer so it's the last thing that people load. So if you go look at your load time for your site, probably the first 70% of it is just because you're loading scripts from other websites. Uh, this moves them all into the footer from the header, so it loads after your content. So your bounce rate will go down drastically just from this one uh, plugin. I'm a big fan of that one. All right. That's, uh, that's probably the answer to one of the other questions that we got, which was how does your site still load so fast with all these plugins? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a really good question. And like I said, I've spent so much time. I know I have I like most people, a lot of people say like keep it to a bare minimum with WordPress plugins. Um I I don't I don't buy that too much cuz I think it it matters so much more who developed the plugin and how they developed the plugin and if they're good coders, then it's not going to 
give any extra load time. There's not going to be any extra errors or anything. Um, and there's ways that people can develop plugins to, again, like load the script in the footer. So all these all these plugins that I use, I've, I've done a lot of research into, and I made sure that by enabling them, every everything I test, so um, so so say like subscribe to comments reloaded. I this thing was sending out emails all the time, and uh, I basically eventually I tried turning it off, and I looked at my data, I noted the date that I turned it off, and I said, okay, my hypothesis is that my uh, return visit rate should go up because people won't be as pissed that they're getting these subscribe to comment emails. Um, but that turned out to be not true at all, and like all my data started going terrible. All my uh, return visits started going terribly wrong, <laughs> and my comment rate went down once I turned this plugin off. So, uh, so yeah, I do I do like a lot of testing, even with site uh, with load times and stuff, to make sure that each of these things actually increases my conversion rate. Um, so, so I can stand by all these and say that I've researched all these a ton, but uh, but again only for my target market. I know that this is the combination of plugins that is working awesome for my target market. So, um, And cool. then, yeah, like thirst, Thirsty Affiliates is a cool little thing. It's like Pretty Link Pro. Uh, basically, you can put in an affiliate link. So say I put in uh, Life on Fire. Anytime I say Life on Fire on the blog, it'll automatically go in and place that with an affiliate link. So that's what I think I'm going to switch to. Um, Tweedly, this just posts out my uh, archived posts to Twitter. Video SEO plugin helps uh, helps me with my click-through rate. When people search for articles that have a video on it, it'll show the video and a play button, so it helps my click-through rate. Um, yeah, and then this is this is an essential one. WordPress SEO, um, and then this thing actually WP Squeeze Bar. I don't know if you can buy it anymore, but uh, this is our number one converting thing for the entire site is this top bar right here, which is the WP Squeeze Bar. That's all it says. Get our latest ebook for free, enter your email, download it now. Um, that's actually our number one converting thing. I think we get like 55% of our opt-ins from this. So that's interesting. And uh, yeah, that's all we use. <laughs> that's all? Nice, nice. Um, well, I want to make sure we answer that original question, which was, uh, do you know, and if you don't know, then maybe we can, we can circle back, but um, how many blog posts you wrote into you before you hit 1,000 fans? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, so the, uh, this, this thing got us our first 1,000 fans, this three steps to evaluate your business idea for free. And that was your um, third is, blog post? Uh, yeah, I think. Was it three or four? I think it was three. Um, so that, it didn't initially give us our first thousand fans. Um, that over time gave us our first thousand fans. When we first posted it, we probably got like an initial burst of say 50 or 100 people who really thought that we were, like, were convinced that we were experts, that we were thought leaders, and that they wanted to follow us and see what we had to say. So... That was the first one that got us like our first little fan base and was really motivating for us. Um, and then it looks like four, five, probably six or seven until our big one. And keep in mind, these are two people writing blog posts too. So, um, so it's not like it's not like we were just like posting. Uh, it's not like this one person going. This was another big one for us: setting goals, the only way to live your life, your dreams. Um, that was another one I stole straight off of willmitchell.com and put it up on here, and it immediately did like 50 times better. Um, so that one, that's six, seven. Uh, that one was pretty big, but that's eight. That one, nine. So we probably did like, say, 10 or 15 posts before we had our first post that like, that really validified it as a business, um, and that was the importing post. The, once the importing post came, this was a really big post too. Any post you see with the video on it performs really well for us. Um, so. Awesome. And then, it, and then um, I do want I do want to look though and see. I'll find out the exact number of posts until we had like the 
a complete blow up. Okay. I've got a lot of people asking if you can somehow share that mind map. Is it possible to uh, turn that to a PDF or something that we could post along with this video? Yeah, yeah, probably. I can probably do that. If not, I can take a screenshot or something and just put that up. Yeah, however it can be exported. That's probably the most yeah. common question we're getting. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like it was the 12th blog post we put up and the fourth one that I put up personally because my business partner is more of a writer. So the fourth blog post I put up in the twelfth total was the importing one, and that was just immediately like the the business was completely different overnight. You know, we I went to bed, posted this, and I had ten people talking to me on my email, and no one really gave a shit. And I woke up and had tons of people that thought for some reason that I had been importing millions of dollars of stuff for my entire life, even though I say I only did it for a few years. So. Um, so yeah, those, those although this this blog post we are already over a thousand readers. I wouldn't say a thousand fans. Um, this blog post is what got that like put the business on a whole different level in terms of our goal. From there, there was to um, it really changed our goals with the business. So awesome. Uh, I've got another question. When you did the a B split testing, did you create different pages for each of the logos you had made on ninety nine designs? Um, yeah, so this is the cool part about visual website optimizer. So let me I'll run through and just act like I was gonna make a test just to show you how easy it is. So all you do is put actually through Segmentio again, you're gonna basically put a little tracking code on your site and visual website optimizer will detect when people come in. And if there's an element of the page they're supposed to be testing, they'll switch that element out for that person permanently. So, like, say I was testing the logo. I would just come here. You can do all these things to it. So I'm in, here's the control, and I'm in variation one. So I'm going to create one variation where I just change out this image. And, uh, you know, you can... Just pick any image. You can upload images. So here's like literally what we did at one point was put in this different image. And then you can keep on adding variations if you want. So say I wanted to test three images here. Change that image again. Um, and say we'll test this one. And the so next step on that. So now Although I didn't change anything on my site, Visual Website Optimizer knows what, I, what I'm trying to do. Um, and then you set up your goals. So it use, you can see my frequently used goals. So let's say I want them to sign up for, I mean, I'm basically tracking everything with this. If I'm, if I'm doing the logo, then I'm going to be, I may be testing this sign up field. I may be testing this button. I may be, I may be testing engagement in general. Um, so there's a few things I would do for this one, but my main goal is to get people on my list. So um, that's going to be my first couple goals is list signups. And if they visit these thank you pages, then I know that they've went through my signup process. That's what that is. Um, and then engagement, I always do that just to get an alternative view and some more data. So, and then you would set that up, you know, logo testing. Uh, this logo should increase conversions immediately. There's your hypothesis, because it's so easy to change your hypothesis. If you run this test for five weeks and, and don't have any hypothesis, your mind will just make one up that'll fit the data. So it's important to put your initial thoughts in here. Um, and then, yeah, you can even segment who you target, so you can only target new people, so people that have seen your old logo and are familiar with that one, are already fans of that one, they won't see the difference. Um, and yeah, it's literally that easy. And then if I create, if I clicked create your test right here, it would start switching out this logo for two thirds of the people to those other two options. And then so from there, it's not there, an uh, entirely new page, it's just that one particular element, and then the entire rest of the page is exactly the same. It's all, and it's all being delivered from the same URL. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, what happens, so if I load with that one specifically, it would be any page on my site, right? So if I went to this page, 
then as it was loading, it'll hit Visual Website Optimizer's thing, and Visual Website Optimizer will replace that image out for the website, basically. There's no changes on your site, no different pages, nothing like that. Um, Visual Website Optimizer does it all for you in a way that your target audience and your visitors won't even notice. Great. Uh, another question is, did you run your advertising along with your name slash logo testing for your email signup before you launched the main site? Yes, I did. So, um, so yeah, that, that first test, let me see if I can bring it up. Um, that first test, yeah, was completely, we didn't even have the domain name for any of those yet. So, oh, man. I wish I knew where I had the first A/B test right now, but um, but yeah, the first uh, the first A/B test we purely did to those pages that you saw on um, losing all my images. I got way too many tabs now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so when we first did um, we we set it up to just blank pages on lead pages. This is actually unbounced. This is before lead pages was out. If lead pages was out, I would use that now, but um. But well, this is basically just a hosted page off of Unbounce, um, and we made four different pages on Unbounce and tested them separately. Um, it's a little bit easier to do it now in hindsight through like Visual Website Optimizer and Lead Pages. So with Lead Pages, you would go into your Lead Pages account, create the landing page, um, and then after landing page is created, the first variation is created, you would go into Visual Website Optimizer and then create a test based on that one page and then switch out all the elements on Visual Website Optimizer. So you're still sending everyone to one page and Visual Website Optimizer is what's actually changing the brand elements and the, all the landing page elements for you. So yeah, um, this was, we ran Google and Facebook ads to this and the only difference with all of these were we changed the name, which this is just some like little pretty text thing generator I found on the internet. So we changed the name with the exact same text and style and everything so that the styling wouldn't affect anything. And then we changed um, this first headline and the headline was basically what the brand was going to be all about, what that positioning was. And uh, and that's what ended up winning. So let me also show you the other one of the one of the comparisons. So we had Startup Bros and Jedi Startups was our next best performing one. So you can see there's Startup Bros. Follow two bros fresh out of college on an entrepreneurial quest not to have or not to have to get jobs. Not have to get jobs. That's confusing, huh? <laughs> um, and okay, so yeah, that was actually the exact same. So we were just testing the name here. Completely same elements. Everything's exactly the same. We just changed Jedi Startups. And apparently a few other little words, but I wouldn't have done that if I I did not know better then. <laughs> so yeah, all you're gonna do basically is set up one little landing page on lead pages or something, and then use Visual Website Optimizer to go in and replace that logo image with different images, and then run the run the traffic to it. So. Cool. Uh, were you just using the paid traffic to do the testing, or did you keep driving paid traffic? Um, to grow after that? Uh, we just ran it for the test. So um, we probably spent like, I'd say, 25 bucks on the first test because I had one of those little $100 uh, coupons from AdWords before they made you spend $25 to get it. <laughs> uh, so I had like 100 bucks spend on uh, Google and probably like 20 to 30 bucks on Facebook. And uh, just through that, we drove, drove enough traffic to uh, to get this validated. And it's actually really interesting. Like a few of the people, a few of our biggest fans in the business, like the people that message me once a week on Facebook and that I actually respond to, are from this A/B test. Like we ran one A/B test after, and I mean, we literally didn't. There was like a thank you pop up when people filled this out. It was like, thanks, we're launching soon. <laughs> Um, we didn't even have the domain name. That was one of my worries was that someone was going to buy these domain names that we were testing. Uh, that didn't happen. That's never happened to any of my clients either. Uh, anyone that I recommend this to and help through this, 
they've never had a domain uh, domain main domain main name <laughs> uh, <laughs> snatched up from them or anything. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, this has always been from from everything I've seen, this is still a really effective uh, and powerful technique to do to test a brand element. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let me just scroll through, and you should be able to see the questions as well, too. And thank you, Molly, for that's the best question I've ever seen. What's your affiliate link for lead pages? <laughs> <laughs> best question I've ever seen. Yeah, Visual, uh, Visual Website Optimizer actually works with any site. Um, so yeah, it, it has a WordPress plugin just to work with that. But like I said, it's literally, um, I don't know if I can find it easily in here, but um, yeah, so it's, it's just this. If you put this tracking code on your site, on the top of your site basically, then, uh, then, <clears throat> then it'll go through and try to switch out your elements if you have it set to. Um, so the WordPress plugin that they use basically just puts this at the top of the page. Not anything complicated. If you have two different web forms, you can test both of those separate web forms, right? Yeah, um, especially if they have different thank you pages, then it gets really easy. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. easy to do that though. All right. Um, have you? Did you build all your pages on WordPress? Somebody's asking some questions about. Um, if you've done anything on and built anything on any other platforms, um, I'm a huge WordPress fan. There's there's probably some good platforms out there, but uh, but like just and I guess this kind of sounds dumb since I'm like 23, but um, you know, just like how long I've been in the game, I've seen so many things come and go. Like Magento was like the all-star e-commerce script not even two years ago, and I think they're just like one of the worst now. So. Like WordPress just has such staying power, and there's so many people developing for it that I'd stick to WordPress for almost everything I do. Awesome. Oh, um, what's the name of the website you said uh, that does hosting just for WordPress? Yeah. Um, so there's there's two really good ones. One's called WP Engine, and this is actually created by and run by the people that created WordPress initially. Uh, I think they're automatic, I think they're called. They make like the Jetpack plugin and stuff. So that's one of them. And then the other one is called Pressable. And that's at pressable.com. And they're basically the same thing. I think they're a little bit cheaper though. So WP Engine's like the, I think, higher class of the two. And then Pressable's really good for, uh, for just starting out and getting a lot of the same benefits. Awesome, awesome. Um, taking a look, seeing if there's any general questions we didn't answer. You guys can always hunt Will down in the uh, Facebook group. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, my my direct email too is uh, will at startupbros dot com, and uh, any anyone you guys can email me, and I'll make sure I get an answer to you pretty quick. Um, and then yeah, I'm always on Facebook and stuff too. Oh, um, hey, hurry up and go buy startupchicks.com before Molly does. <laughs> I know. I was just, I was going to answer that. One. I think uh, I think I have a friend that already bought it. So <laughs> if it's available, though, I think it's a good one. All right. And uh, and Vanessa, the the thing I mentioned before, although I guess I shouldn't mention again because it's not that good anymore. Um, but it, it's called Magento, and that was like a that like two or three years ago was like the all star e commerce thing. And then, I mean, you can build a better WordPress or um, e-commerce site on WordPress now, but there's tons of e-commerce platforms now with Shopify, all those. Cool. Um, here's a good question. How are you promoting your blog posts? <clears throat> um, yeah, so, like, when we make a new blog post now, the, the email list does most of it for us now. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Molly. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the email list does most of it now. So when we do a new blog post, we're pretty confident that it's going to be answering a lot of questions directly and like really speak to our target audience and to the entrepreneur market. So um, like when we when we write blog posts now, we're literally 
taking the same questions that we're getting. Like if we get 50 of the same question, then we just take that question and write a huge blog post about it and then send it out to the list. And uh, just because it's it's so closely, just because it delivers value at the right time to them and, and for free and we don't ask for anything back, I think by the time they read, after they're done reading the blog article, I feel like it, they're... I feel like a lot of people expect us to ask for something from them, and the fact that we don't makes them want to want to share. I mean, that's that's really where everything comes from now. Like we have we have people that go around and like we have a guy that runs a Reddit, um, a subreddit for us called Startup Bros, and he just posts our content all the time. I mean, like once one if you have a, it, it's all about creating the right brand to to have a really engaging. To, to, that people really want to engage with and re people really want to uh, associate themselves with and, uh, you know, things like that. You know, if, if you can create a brand that people are just going to want to help grow themselves because it speaks to them and their identity so strongly, then uh, I think that's one of the strongest things you can do. But, um, but in terms of, like, how we actually get um, clicks on our blog posts and, like, new traffic to our website... Um, Guest blogging has been big for us, um, which is incredibly easy. You just pretty much go around and ask people if you can make guest posts because everyone's looking for for good content. Yeah, by the way, if anyone wants a guest post for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like guest blogging has been a big one for us, but not nearly as effective as I thought it would be. Like when I'm driving, like I put I put a blog post that did really well up on uh, Pro Blogger, and we ended up getting like 150 clicks from it. And they promoted it to their email list. They did everything they could to promote this thing. We got 150 clicks through to our website. Um, so, like, I, I always thought guest blogging was going to be much more effective. But, like, we just post it, you know, we just we just give it to our audience and the channels that they're used to getting it, Facebook, Twitter, email, and uh, and they've been sharing it for us really effectively, so. Great, man. Well, um, we'll keep it tight to the 90-minute mark. We try not to let these calls go beyond that and ideally 60 minutes, but uh, I didn't want to stop, and we're getting great feedback from everybody, so I really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing this, and um, you know, maybe we'll have to have you back and, and uh, keep going at some point because this is really, really good stuff, but definitely appreciate you stepping in and uh, providing some uh, really, really deep and insightful content and, you know, just a, a little bit different topic than what we featured up to this point. So, you know, I think everybody really enjoyed it and definitely really, really, again, appreciate you coming on and, and sharing with us and being so willing to, you know, show us exactly how you did everything too. I think that's one of the things I love the most about this community is everybody is so willing to help each other and so willing to, as Shane likes to say, open the kimono and, and just, you know, lay it out there because, you know, I think a lot of us, Pretty much all of us have that abundance mindset that it's not going to harm you to help the others in the group and to show other people what you're doing. So, again, thanks, man. Awesome yeah, stuff. Yeah, definitely. There. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, yeah, I really hope you guys got some value out of it because, like I said, uh, I don't usually teach this stuff. I just threw this together uh, last night. So I hope you guys got some value out of it. And uh, and I'll make sure to, to give you, Ryan, a whole bunch of stuff you can put into the show notes and everything. And I'll make sure also to take a screenshot of this because I think this is one of the most valuable things in any analytics account. And uh, this is where all of our traffic has actually come from in the last year and two months. So, uh, so I'll, I'll include a screenshot of this too so people can go through and try to try out these channels that have worked for us uh, and, and try it for themselves. Sounds great. Definitely appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Will. We'll be back next week. And uh, I would imagine Mr. Unsworth will be here as well. So we'll send him some well wishes and definitely appreciate all of you guys and have a great rest of your week. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. Hey, hope you enjoyed the episode with Life on Fire TV. And I've got one quick thing before you head out. If you could do us a huge favor by going over to your iTunes, whether it's on your phone or on your desktop, and click over to that ratings and reviews. If you're to write us a five-star review, that would be so, so helpful. That is one of the only ways we can get exposure and to grow here on iTunes. So if you could take a minute, could write us a five-star review, let us know the one thing that you love about what we're doing, that would be so helpful. You could also go to lifeonfirereviews.com. Maybe if you're driving, it's a little bit easier to uh, remember. It's lifeonfirereviews.com. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.